Hello, Michelle. I'm the licensed driver. I think it's the ninth or the tenth regular meeting with your good self. Yeah, uh, and I love each and every single one of them. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to be able to, you know, discuss literature. It is, actually, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not better than having a chat about books, really, is it? Sorry? Not better than having a chat about books and no. that you've enjoyed. No. Uh, and, you know, I hear people talking about, like, what TV programmes or films mm. they've, they've seen in work, and it's just yeah. like, I don't, I can't log into that at all. Mm. Just no, it's, it's not not me at all. I mean, it's got to be box with me because yeah. I need to use my imagination. Mm. So it stays in there. Whereas yeah. if I'm watching television, somebody say, "Did you see that last night?" Oh yeah, I saw it. Well, what did you think? Mm. Oh, I don't know because I, while I was watching it, my mind was gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna call today subjective. Yeah. Okay. And there's there's a good reason for that, and you'll see as we go along because um the first the first book that I've read this month um that I'm going to cover is the apt pupil. Stephen now, King. Yeah. Now yeah. I know you weren't fussed on this book. I did like the film, and I didn't. I don't like the subject. No, no. A lot of people don't, and I definitely, you know, it it, it not me especially with what's going on at the minute. What absolutely blew my mind was um, there was, a, listen listen to this, right? The hostages were still hostages. Yeah. Others have it worse, he thought. All over the world, others have it worse. In Israel, the Palestinians killed busloads of farmers who were committing the political crime of going into town to watch a movie. And in this case, who it was a bunch of kids who committed the political crime of holding a music festival. The Israelis cope with this injustice by dropping bombs on the Palestinians and killing children along with whatever terrorists may be there. Mm. What's changed? That was written 45 years ago. Absolutely nothing has changed. It's true, yeah. You know? This is where I'm coming into my next book, which was The Back of a Donkey. Huh. What, see, did you see how I led into that? It, I, I'm not here to this. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not a Stephen King book, is it? Not, no. No, this one is by uh, Miner and Brocklebank. Yeah. And um, she's, her full name is... Come on. Her full name is Nancy Elaine Hartman Minor, but the book is by Minor and Brocklebank. Okay. Is um, it, does it have a biblical theme going through this or just very much yeah. a biblical theme? It's the story of Mary. Oh okay. And, which is did you see how I led him yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, very good. <laughs> Brilliant segue. Yep. Um and this is going back to what I was saying about being subjective. Hmm. It a lot of people are gonna a lot of very religious people would love that book. Hmm. Yeah. I'm very man, I'm very religious. With me it came with but um Nancy Minor has written that story as if it's from the point of view of an American teenage girl huh. in modern day, it's, yeah. even though you know she she's gone on about the fact that Mary went to to you know she rode a donkey to to go from um, Nazareth to Bethlehem to avoid the taxes. So yeah. the story's there, but it's the way she portrays Mary hmm. and this overexcitable. Um, um, it did my head in, in yeah. all honesty. It, it's great for, and do you know what? For anybody who has got young children, yeah. this would be fantastic. You know, it's because it's a lighter side of the story of Mary going back home to give birth to Jesus. What, what um, age range is it aimed at, Michelle? Is, this, is it a teenage it book for, for kids or? 
It doesn't say, and um, Nancy Minor um, puts a lot of biblical references in there at the yeah. end of every chapter. Yeah. Um, but I think that the story, the way she's written it, the way she's portrayed Mary as a very excitable, very happy young girl who is totally in love with Joseph and she can't wait to get back to Bethlehem to give birth. <laughs> Great. Just not for me. Okay. You know, for me, I read the story of Mary and what she went through. Yeah. Um, you know, Gabriel came and no, sorry, no. Where the way I read that was that when Gabriel came, Mary saw her backside like, "Oh my God, what the hell's going on?" Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, horses for courses again. It's subjective. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You know, very subjective. And as I said, for anybody who is highly religious, highly excitable, mm. and I know I am highly excitable, but mm. um, you know. Great book for, for reading that story to children. Right. Because it, it because it's a lighter side mm. of you know what, what can be termed really is quite a horrific story. Mm. Um so so yeah, but not for me. Yeah, you know, and, and okay. that's just being subjective, that's just my yeah. personal point of view, because I know that lots of other people would really enjoy the way Nancy Minor has portrayed Mary in this yeah. as a very happy-go-lucky young girl. I, I can't imagine that. But the, my reading of that is well brought up in a Catholic school. You know, yeah. it's a very sad situation. You know, the, the poor, they got to head to this stable to give birth because nobody had let them in, stay the night and things. Yeah. So I, I, I can't get mad around being happy-go-lucky type. No, no, I couldn't. But again, you know, I studied Catholicism. Yeah. I studied with the Church of England. I studied with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And none of those doctrines yeah. would portray Mary as a happy-go-lucky teenage girl who is madly in love with Joseph, who is completely over the moon at being knocked up out of wedlock. Yeah. Yeah. Just no. But the fact that that would soften that story for children yeah true yeah. so so I think and and you know for, from Nancy Miner's point of view she loves God she loves Jesus and she is over the moon about absolutely everything that happens in the Bible again you know I don't know sort of what her her doctrine is um, but no you raised as Catholic. I studied Catholicism. I studied Judaism. I studied with the Church of England. I studied with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And none of those doctrines look on that story kindly, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Whereas this book does. I think that to, to to introduce children to the story of Mary, I think it's fantastic. But as an adult's point of view... I can't relate to Mary being a happy-go-lucky, excitable, over-the-moon teenage girl looking forward, in love with Joseph, because history shows that, and in the Bible shows that, really she wasn't, you know, it was an arranged marriage. Yeah. But, you know, again, horses for courses yeah, and subjective. Yeah. Yeah. Subjectively, for children, fantastic, mm. because you know it, it's lightening that story. Mm. For adults who have been raised in other doctrines, who just can't see Mary as a very happy young girl, go lucky young girl, it's a no. I, I I have to agree. I'm going back to Stephen King with the Axe pupil. Okay. Um, just just to touch on it briefly. Yeah. Um. It was very relevant to what's going on today. Um, absolutely horrific. But this is what I wanted to talk about earlier on. When I was in psychology at university, we did the study of, it, it's kind of like, it, it's a, a human behaviour mm. and the fact that you can turn anybody into a barbarian like mm. that by taking away responsibility. Mm. Now, I remember when I was at university, we did the study with two 
uh, psychologists and I could never remember the name of them. And I got round it because the same study was done by Killam and Mann in the 1960s. Yeah. Killam and Mann, wow. who did the study of a one, one person, you take away responsibility and they will kill another without a second thought. And the whole study is that, um, you know, people are taken in off the street and they're told, like, you know, you, you've got no responsibility here. Just do as you're told. If they don't answer the, if the subject doesn't answer the question correctly, you must give them an electric shock. Gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and as the subject comes in and they're saying, like, you know, I've got a pacemaker fitted or I've got epilepsy or da, da, da. And yet the sub, and yet the control subject um, will then go on to kill whoever sat in the seat yeah. because they've got somebody there with a the clipboard going, I'm taking away your responsibility. Press the button. They've answered the question incorrectly. Press the button. And in the end, you know, a, a no answer is still a wrong answer. Press the button. And even when this fella stops screaming, People are still pressing that button. Yeah. And it turned out that seven out of ten people would continue to kill the can kill the subject. There's, because there's, there's a film yeah. made, isn't there, where people like we yeah. set up um, control groups as warders on summer prisoners. Yeah. Um again without responsibility. And they just yeah. sort of, you know, they they can the whole personality, the whole mental yeah. state changes. Yeah, all right. Well once you take that responsibility away yeah. and you're somebody's giving you orders at, you know and and that was what the nazis were saying yeah, yeah. during world war ii yeah. was that the responsibility was taken away from them they were given a direct order and therefore they followed it because it was on pain of death i yeah. don't I, I don't believe it you know i think that a lot of them did it because they enjoyed it they must have did it because you don't do that to other human beings and see it happening I don't know. I don't know. But Kilman Man proved mm -hmm. that seven out of ten people, once the responsibility was taken away, mm -hmm. would continue to press that electric shock button, even though they knew that the subject was dead yeah. or had they had killed the subject. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Did you so, enjoy so, this book more, Michelle, then? Was this a better read for you? Yeah, for me, it was, because I could see the psychology behind it. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the fact that this boy was twisted from the get-go. Yeah. You know, you, you could see it, he was twisted from the get-go. He enjoyed all this and the fact that he went on. But what was really, really odd was the fact that they both started killing tramps, mm. you know, separately of each other. Yeah. I, I found that a bit... Mm. It's very dark, isn't it? Dark, dark yeah. subject. Yeah, it's dark and it's horrible. I didn't you like know, it. I, I don't think I finished it, to be honest. I, 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 I don't like the subject. But, yeah, I, I I can't say I enjoyed it. How can you enjoy a book like that? But mm. I definitely found it interesting. Okay. De definitely found it interesting. And it was something that kept me reading. And I think it kept me reading because I wanted to see Just Sunday get his comeuppance. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, so, but the boy was twisted from the mm. get-go. So we moved, we went from the apt pupil to yep. from the back of a donkey, yep. and I walked that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm going to move on now to something completely different. I don't know whether you can see this. Leonardo oh, da Vinci. Come on, come on, come on! I'll have to send you the link. It I can is... see it now. I can see it now. Yeah, the life of. Oh. Oh, it's gone. It is the life of Leonardo da Vinci by Giorgio Vasari. Is it fiction, Michelle? No. Oh, yeah. It's a biography yeah. about Leonardo da Vinci written by somebody who knew him. Oh. And that throws everything you ever thought about da Vinci completely out the window. Because Giorgio Vasari knew Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. This was written in the times, uh, the late times of, of Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, I found this book. 
really very interesting because as you know, I love animals and into animal rights, etc. Yeah. And there's a big movement saying that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci used to go into marketplaces, buy caged birds, and then go and set them free. And he did. Yeah. You know, he did. Which, you know, I kudos to him. He also used to cut animals up yeah. so that he could see how the insides of them worked. I didn't know that about him. Um, Giorgio Vasari uh, describes visiting him visiting uh, Da Vinci and he couldn't stand the smell yeah. because Da Vinci had all these rotting carcasses Wait. everywhere. So, you know, but the man was a genius. Yeah. Da Vinci was a genius and it's kind of like, do you know he designed a flying machine? Oh, yeah. And if he'd got it off, literally, if he'd got it off the ground, it would have flown. You know, it, it, so it wasn't just his art. This man was amazing. He was a genius. Um, you know, he and as I said about taking animals to pieces, not just animals, because there is, if you look through Da Vinci's work, you can see that he also drew uh, the, the insides of human beings as well. There's so, some things that used to be on World in Action, you know, the, the, the man with the sort of cross-shaped yeah, yeah, uh, and you know, I mean, but but you you can't deny Da Vinci's intelligence. The man, you know, there's that that fine line. They say there's a fine line between intelligence and madness, mm. and I do think that Da Vinci might have walked it on yeah. a tightrope. Yeah, because some of the things that he did. I mean, he got a a, a squirrel or something, oh. and um, basically deformed it. Oh. And and put stuff into its heads to scare people. Yeah. And um, but you know, and, and he was renowned for not finishing anything. Oh. He used to start all sorts, and one of the very few pieces that he finished was was uh, was um, the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Um. Everybody reckoned in modern day that. Da Vinci was in love with her. No, she was another man's wife. Huh? And and looking at what Giorgio Vasari, and as I said, he knew him. So he's, he's written this like the 15th century then? He wrote it in the 15th century. All translated yeah. and things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, written, uh, t translated by T Thames and Hudson. Yeah. And I think that um, he might have been gay. Because uh, Vasari describes Da Vinci's love for a young male. Hmm. And, you know, he is completely besotted hmm. with this with this young man, um, one, one of his students. Um, and, I'm um, sorry, I can't remember the name. I should have highlighted it. Okay. Um, but you know, I think that's that's the least of the least of what people should know about about my uh, about uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And he didn't like Michelangelo. Hmm. Oh. Did not the <laughs> the rivalry between them two was epic. Um, but you know, you you can't just can't deny. And and as they said. I like the sound I, of that. I'm going to get a copy of that, Michelle. I'll get it. Get it. Is it on well, Amazon? That. If you wait until the end of next month, I'll bring it up with me. You can have it. Oh, yeah, yeah bring it. We'll shop a few then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime. Nice one. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely fantastic. It's it's the fact that how often do you get something like that? Hmm. You know, where it's written in the time of yeah. Da Vinci. Yeah. And, um, uh, uh, spoiler alert, but you'll, you'll love this bit. He died in the arms of the king. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah. There's so much about Da Vinci in there yeah. <laughs> that you just don't know. And as I said, he's madness. That what genius that walked that type of madness. You know, and he was just like, he'd be part of the way through something and then just go... Oh, 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 what's that? He'd be off. <laughs> he probably had an AD, ADHD, ADHD or whatever it's called. Yeah. 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 No, but it's the fact 
that George Obasari wrote this knowing him. Yeah. But he also knew Michelangelo. Yeah. And um, there's a an illustration in there of Vasari um, as drawn, I think it's as drawn by D Da Vinci. So yeah, and the, the you know you you're, you see a lot of you're not going to see it on, on that no, camera. Can't see it. Uh, a lot of Da Vinci's work, um, but of course the 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 opening is uh, the introduction is about Giorgio Vasari, mm. so it introduces you to how Giorgio Vasari knew yeah. Leonardo da Vinci. It's amazing. It's one of the best nonfiction I've ever read. Brilliant. Yeah, that's going on my should be red list. Yeah, I'll I'll bring that up with me next time. Brilliant, probably. brilliant, nice one. Okay, quickly, let's talk about Shannon St. Rue. Who's um, this Shannon? With the name again, Michelle? Shannon St. Rue. Shannon St. Rue, okay. Right, uh, Pink Converse, The Sub, and Professor Bill. Erotic shorts. Um, very male dominant. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I found them interesting, again, from a human interest point of view on how um people use things like pink converse is spot on how he bought a girl for a pair of pink converse what yeah how he bought sexual favors from a girl for yeah. a pair of pink converse oh yeah um mm. professor bill the dark side of you know of and it has been done um you know somebody who has um misused their position of power yeah. to get sexual favors yeah. again so erotic shorts okay um but the sub was the other way around he thought yeah. he was going into it going to be the dominant but yeah. showed in the end that the the sub had the power and to find out how the sub had the power you need to read the book okay recommended so, do you enjoy yeah. that yeah yeah you know if you if you like erotic shorts yeah, yeah. you know yeah. It's 10 15 minute reads this is a great mix you've got today michelle you know i don't read the, the the scope and the range of the what you've been reading <laughs> oh i know i know yeah <laughs> i'm one of them months <laughs> <I know. laughs> um what else have we got uh camp cougar by Lorraine Carey and another lady, and I always forget the other one. Lorraine Carey is a story spirit for you on Twitter. Yeah. You know Lorraine. Um, and yeah. it's hilarious. It's, uh, it's an, again, an erotic story, yeah. um, but it's so much fun. You know, but it's there's fun in there. There's it, a lot of Southern sass in there. Yeah. Like, you know, you, that kind of like Southern American sassiness yeah, comes yeah. across in the writing. Yeah. And it's got a heartwarming human element as well. So there's a little bit of some, you, you know, if if you're, if you don't mind a bit of eroticism and it's not majorly erotic, mm. um, you know, it, it, it's a good read. It's a good read. For, I mean, she made me laugh so many times with her antics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well worth a read, and that is uh, Camp Cougar by Lorraine Carey. Right. And last but not least, The, Ki the King by J.R. Ward. And uh, there's a lot going on in this book, actually. So it's not just about the fact that um, anybody who's reading the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, uh, yeah. the band of bats, do you want to put the beep on there? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Um, has made uh, another play for the throne. Um, and this time they've got all of the Glymira, the Glymira, the aristocracy, mm. uh, on board. They've they, And they've used Rat's wife against him. Now, anybody who knows the Black Dagger Brotherhood series will tell you that um, when a male is mated to his Shalan, <laughs> nobody threatens her. <laughs> um, so uh yeah it's it um but she finds the way around what the glymira have done and in the end uh i'm not going to tell you you need to read it it's the 
like take a brother on series. But there's a lot going on there in there because it taking on the um still going on about the role of Trez, who's the shadow, and his falling for one of the chosen Selena. And you've also got a sale, um, the continuing saga of a sale and uh solar in there as well. So you got a lot going on in the king. What's this got to be read? It's J.R. Ward. It's the Black Tiger Brotherhood series. It's just the best paranormal romance series on the market at the moment. Excellent. But Michelle, the time's going to run out in a second okay. now. So while it's uh, recording nicely, I'll say thank you very much. Uh, it's been my pleasure. As always with us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And uh, I'll see you next month. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Cheers, Michelle. What's up?